This is the WS-90 weather station from the Chinese manufacturer EcoWit and we are going to look at this. As you can see here where they're testing their haptic feedback by a rainfall corridor, um, their testing is obviously a lot more comprehensive and targeted than ours and as you can see we've mounted ours on a van and took it to various testing sites in order to get some of the more uh, geographic readings that we need for these particular sites where we've got paraglacial environments and we want to see what happens with this instrument in those locations. So we went to the ice fields, we had it in our own yard, and we even took it to the Environment Canada weather station in order to be able to compare the readings between the two of them. Right now we're having a lot of windy weather at our location in Banff and you can see from this picture here this is still where this product is mounted near our front and there is some shelter from wind effects so I don't have a textbook mount as we would prefer but this will give you a bit of an indication in real time as to what you can expect and how the interface works so on this interface I'll direct your attention right now to the middle of this area where which is where the wind is and this unit uh, updates every minute and that seems to me to be the most frequent updating um, interval that I can set in the settings. So this interface is showing the outdoor temperature, the indoor temperature, where that hub is located, and more on the hub a little bit later. The wind, the temperature is interesting because not only do they give you the relative temperature which you need to adjust in the settings to um, make it as a relative to sea level pressure which is what commonly gets reported by your media your local weather station and so on this gives you the absolute temperature at your weather station and because where I am located in Banff we're at about 4500 feet the ab absolute pressure where we are is always going to be a lot less than the pressure at sea level and that's kind of a neat feature with this item that you can do both and you can calibrate the relative when you move to somewhere else. Now what we've got here is in my backyard I've got an east facing garage wall that's under an eave and you can see that the temperature here at that location is actually colder than the outdoor temperature which is more prone to being wind affected and another pleasant surprise that I had was um, I had purchased maybe about five years ago some temperature sensors with a uh, display panel uh, from AliExpress and when I hooked up this hub the hub started talking to all these units and I hadn't expected that so what this simply means here by CIDR channel 2 is the the temperature sensor uh, I think I got five of them with that unit and each one has a number and you can rename them in this software so I have one of these sitting beside the fermenter for my cider right now and it's showing me that in my back mudroom it's minus 5.6 in centigrade and what the humidity is there so that was an added bonus that I hadn't been expecting in this software and then what you can do is um, if you want to see a graph on the wind which is what I'm most interested in right now because we've had some pretty big gusts you can see it's identified and now what you just saw there was an update uh, we got up to the top of that minute and then it refreshed so back to the wind this is showing me the peak wind speed for this time period that's on the graph and it's also showing here the uh, 17 
which was the uh, lowest gust. Now the blue shaded areas with the peaks are for the gusts and the yellow line is for the averaged wind speed and then across the x-axis we've got the time and up on the y-axis we've got the magnitude of the wind speeds expressed in kilometers per hour. You can change these into Fahrenheit if that's what suits you and I am quite a fan of the way that the wind direction is visualized. So I like the scattergram where I can see that all the prevailing winds, which is normal for our area, is from the west. And um, I've also found it interesting that when we get a variation from the west, and you can't see it as well here, but I've often seen that when we get a lull, like in this area, where if you can see this line where I've put my mouse pointer, um, when the wind was more from the uh, east-northeast, as is indicated by this point down here, or 50 degrees on the azimuth, you can see up here it did correspond with a drop in the wind speed. So I didn't really realize before that I can count on my area if the wind does change direction, uh, I might be able to count on a wind speed. But of course, we have to remember that it could be your sighting that could be causing these issues. But in my particular case, um, the wind from the north uh, is not obstructed by too much for probably at least uh, 70 meters. Then there's tree cover that could susceptibly uh, make the influence on that sensor. Alerts are one of the options that can be set from the desktop interface whereas uh, some of the other things such as like your device titles there we just had another refresh. You can you look up here you can see reported five seconds ago from the station. Uh, back we go over here to set up an alert. The three bars up on the upper left corner. Bring up the left hand panel. Go down to alerts and now you can see what I've got here for alerts and you can see the what you need here is you can add emails you can edit your alert to this one is just set up to send an alert to me and um, because it's been so windy here let's for example say I wanted to uh, change the wind gust uh, because I'm getting a lot because the wind is a lot over 40 so I can delete that one that I have for now and I will go here and then pick another uh, wind gust alert and then I will go is greater than 50 and uh, you can save that and now you can see it's added another alert to me I've changed it from 40 to 50 the other leads I have her are um, one of the temperature sensors is set for being in the back mudroom beside the fermenter that's beside the cider that's doing cider right now and then these uh, two alerts for the batteries the haptic, haptic array battery um, that is the double A cells that you insert in the unit and then the capacitor is simply that it's it's a, a large capacitor that stores enough energy from the solar to keep itself uh, up and when it drops below that amount then it'll fall over to the battery and then you can see down here there's a history on when it sent the alerts out and the alerts when they come into you through email they look like uh, this picture that just came up here and um, it's very similar whether you're getting one of those for the temperature or for wind gusts and etc. And again, um, 
the number of alerts that you can set up are fairly comprehensive going all the way from um, pressure, humidity, temperature, dew point, um, outdoor feels like temperatures and so on and so forth. So there's a lot there for you to be able to play with. Go into the EcoWit app on your phone and what you will see when it boots up here is um, you get three dots up in the upper right hand corner which you're not seeing on the desktop app and what we're going to look at here is the calibration because we can't see that on the desktop app and what you'll see here now is you can change calibrations for these values that are over on the left side of the boxes and the most common ones are first of all your wind direction offset because um, you are going to want to point the device you're probably pointing it if you used your phone or a compass you probably pointed your device at magnetic north and um, these devices use true north so in my location and you can look up what the offset is for your location on the internet it's 15 degrees so then what I do is adjust this value which then takes into account the fact that your device is pointing at true uh, magnetic north excuse me and you need to put in the offset which calibrates the device for the values for true north which of course change no matter where you are on in the hemisphere that you're in once you've changed those values to where you want them and uh, you shouldn't have to do much with some of the other ones uh, unless you've used professional equipment in order to validate that you do need to change some calibrations for these other values. Then you can exit out of it and uh, after you've saved everything and um, go from there. Here you can see that um, we have done up a, a bit of a chart that will allow you to compare the features between some of the popular consumer models uh, as opposed to the EcoWit that we're looking at here. Uh, now, uh, just for your information, uh, Weatherflow did send us a Tempest to test, which we've been doing and which will be featured in the probably the next in the videos. Um, Davis was uh, approached about doing uh, the Vantage View and um, after a while they decided that um, they didn't want us comparing it against other units. Um, I'm not sure why. Perhaps they weren't confident about um, what the outcomes would be. And Crestromet uh, suggested that we use their high-end prosumer model, the Kestrel Met 600 from Ambient, but um, that never did arrive, although they kept saying for about the last six months, the last time was that um, got lost in the mail. So it still may show up at some point, at which point we'd be kind of curious to use it as a uh, metric for establishing base comparisons against the Tempest weather flow because we've been having what appears to be some uh, wind velocity issues with the sensors in it. So the EcoWet, as far as I can tell, has been uh, returning the most reliable data and you, what you can see here is um, basically self-explanatory. Uh, you can see where the EcoWist is the most affordable out of the ones that are shown in this table so far. I think uh, Accurite does sell a lower end product which um, my experience with Accurite products are um, I wouldn't even be bothered to uh, assess them in this series. They're just not worth the time. They're so unreliable. I mean you can get them for cheap at places like uh, Amazon or Costco 
and uh, maybe if you want to get your kids something for Christmas as a toy, uh, maybe that would be suitable for that, but otherwise I wouldn't really bother. Um, so if you want to just pause here and go through what's on page one, and uh, I'm going to move to page two here next, and so you could then go back and pause and go through what's over here on page two and see if this is of any value to you. Here's one of the primary reasons I am mostly interested in wind direction and velocity because we do have a couple of trees that are hanging right over our driveway and this is facing to the west and what happens with west winds are these trees if they were to be blown over they would go right over our driveway and uh, hit my vehicles and then um, I would have the consequences so that's why I wanted uh, something that would give me reliable wind direction and velocities so that if I needed to I can move the vehicles out of the way of these trees over here which would go right over the tops of my vehicles and in our area this often happens. So what's my final consensus on this EcoWet WS90 unit? And as you can see, I've elected to permanently mount it at our residence because it's giving me all the features that I want. It's good value for the money. I was able to uh, plug it in in order to have it auto heat the sensors. I was able to get fairly good readings in spite of the fact that I still have to stabilize this high pole mount uh, so it doesn't sway in the winds. But overall, I highly recommend this unit.